Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Though, to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, any of it seems possible. been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three of the gerbils were mine, and two had been my fault. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. Edie 
lady side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along, for me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. But looking back on it now, if she told me there was gonna be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm hmm. Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Dawn. Shooting is strongly encouraged. What? Too early, Dad. Perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Please just take the damn picture. Hey, language. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Smile, Dawn. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Hmm. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Dawn. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. No, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish, how to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. A minute to check the map.
eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Here, Dad. Dad, I, I... Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if... Great shot, Don! I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Don. Just gotta reset the timer. <laughs> It's totally normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! it. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Gregory, it's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. world was like. He reminded me so much of Calvin. Lost in his imagination. Whatever it was, he saw.
sure made him happy. I know how silly it sounds. But I worried about a baby being too happy. I can feel him slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear this. I wish he could have told us about the world he saw. wasn't your fault. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent.
The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died.
My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. and to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good, almost normal. But it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. I think Edie was happy to finally have another painter in the family. Milton Finch in The Magic. Like you, be strong. Of the sun.